Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is all the twirls of 2018 and it's nearly everything that I made in 2018. There are a few things that for some reason I don't have the twirls for anymore, but never mind. Uh, there's not a lot I can do about it now, they're all in the ether somewhere. So I wish I could, you could see the setup. I have Chiana's cat tree in front of me and my laptop on it and I have edited all the twirls down and I'm going to talk you through each thing that I made and whether I think it's a success or was a bit of a failure because there were a few of those. Some of these items have already made their way to the charity shop, some of them have been massive successes so I shall talk you through all of those. Before we get into the twirls I just wanted to let you know that I managed to make 26 necessary clutch wallets last year as well. I still have another nine that are outstanding that are being made starting tomorrow. Thank you to every single one of you who bought one, some of those were gifts for people but the majority of those are either Patreon rewards or actual orders through the shop so thank you very much to every single one of you for ordering an NCW. There are some really really fun fabric combinations that I would never have dreamt up by myself so thank you very much. Okay so first up we have the little capsule wardrobe that I made for Lanzarote. The top is the McCaws 7289, the woven t-shirt is the McCaws 6563 and the trousers are a self-drafted pattern that I copied from a ready-to-wear jumpsuit that I absolutely love. I made all of these in a massive rush to go out to Lanzarote. I wanted a capsule wardrobe to come with me and as lovely as they are none of them really fit and I think this is when I started realizing that I had put on a lot more weight than I had realized I had. In my head it, it was only a few pounds, in reality it was actually two stone. Because these were all tried and true patterns to me, I kind of just powered ahead, made the whole lot of them and unfortunately none of them fit, as you will see in a minute. But beautiful background. So this is the five panel circle skirt from the Savannah Crepe. It's the same McCall's top and it's a little shrug that my mum knitted for me. That skirt is not actually done up to the waistband and to this to this day I still can't get into it even though I've lost, lost a stone since it was made but I love the look, I love the outfit and the whole point of this capsule wardrobe as you can see here was all that the pieces were interchangeable so that's the t-shirt that you'd seen with the pink trousers. Next up is the Vogue 8972 and I think this is the first sew along that I did for this year. This is originally a woven pattern and I transformed it into a pattern that would work with scuba fabrics. I've made it with a lighter weight jersey which you'll see a bit later and that kind of works but scuba is the best for it I feel. Really pleased with this dress, love it very very much. Then we have a full circle skirt that I did a tutorial for. I actually have donated this one, I just never wore it. I probably will make myself something similar but probably in a three quarter circle skirt or maybe a half circle skirt. And then I also have on the shrug in the blue which is the McCall 7289. This is a half circle skirt with some fabric that I got from the Knitting and Stitching show many moons ago and both of these are being worn with the sew over it cow neck t-shirt made from fabric from Minerva Crafts. It's the viscose jersey that I love and have many many colours of. Here we go again with the shrug in a khaki colour this time, same pattern the 7289 and I really actually like that entire outfit. I need to wear that. I don't think I've worn that skirt since I made it. Again it's a little bit tight around the waist. The final shrug is probably the most successful and it's the lightest weight of the fabrics that I used and again all of those fabrics for, were from the textile centre. I wear this one a lot, I really really like this one. So this is the sunny dress which is the sew my style challenge dress for January so making it in February. I was late. I'm not loving this on me. My niece has this now. I think it's because Again, it was a bit of a realisation that I'd put on weight. This is a self-drafted top. It's a mix between the Seamwork Astoria and the Kamatia boxy kangaroo pouch hoodie. I think that's what it's called. And it's made with the same fabric that the previous sh shrug was made from, from the textile centre. It's kind of gold with silver flecks in it. It's really pretty and very lightweight, so it works really well with this pattern. I'm really pleased with how this came out. This is a Victory Patterns Jackie dress. This is fabric from from the textile centre. It kind of looks like denim but it's a Ponty Roma. I really like this. I wore this outfit to the knitting and stitching show. I'm really pleased with it. I have altered the back though which I'll talk about when we get to this dress. This one, oh this one. I so want to love this dress. In fact I do love this dress. This was another sew along. It's the Vogue 8825. 
both fabrics were from Girl Charlie. One is a lighter weight jersey for the top and then the skirt is a Ponty Roma. I thought that would look really nice and I love the sleeves on this. I just think this dress is way too smart for my everyday. If I worked in an office, I would have made multiples of this because it looks amazing and it's really comfortable, but I don't work in an office. So it's gone to the charity shop. So this is another one of those t-shirts. It's McCall's 6563. This was leftover fabric that I had bought from Weaver D. I've made an Eve dress out of it, which I love. This is the Deer and Doe Brewery shirt. I mean, my first attempt at it. I've done a full bust adjustment. I need to tweak that a little bit because the, there is a, the, the darts are slightly too high, I think. Yeah, the darts are slightly too high on this one, so I need to drop the dart points down a little bit. But I really, really like this silhouette, and I probably would wear it like this, and even with either a cropped jumper or a cropped sweater vest, if I can talk mum into knitting me one of those. This is the toaster sweater, and it's my second time making this one, and I actually quite like it. I have donated this one to the charity shop because the fabric was not quite right for it. So I will be making more of those. This is the Butterick 6388 and it was meant to be a dress and it started off life as a dress and it looked awful on me. And I'm really, really pleased that I made a muslin of this one because I have bought some beautiful Atelier Brunette twinkle sweatshirt material to make this particular item out of and it's not good. I absolutely love the collar and I like the yoke on the back of it and I saved this one sort of by chopping off the pocket bits and putting on a waistband and whilst it kind of worked and made it something that I actually would be seen in public wearing or at least seen on the vlog wearing it was not something that then made me want to wear it out in public so as I say it got donated. Good, good, good illustration of why you make a muslin, people. Especially when you have 22 pound a meter fabric. This is the 5895 shirt pattern by Gertie and it comes with pedal pushers. And for some reason, I just decided that I, I wanted a cropped shirt. I have a long torso and I always have to lengthen every single thing that I make in the torso area. And for this one, I was just like, I want a crop shirt, I'm just going to power ahead. And not only did I power ahead, I cut this one out and a second one out of really beautiful fabric and I just wish it was an inch longer. I really do. This was fabric sent to me by the lovely Mary and I have donated this shirt to the charity shop so somebody will love it because it will look great on somebody but it does not look great on me and it was something that I was just like, I'm never going to reach for that. Another reiteration of the always make a muslin people. <laughs> This was a very prolific month. I think this was March. I made a lot of things in March. These are the 7131 trousers. The lovely Karen sent these to me for my KB Pattern Swap, my Christmas one, 2017. And she had a whole outfit in plan for me, which included a bodysuit, which I did make, but I don't think there's any uh, actual evidence of because it just was not good. The bottom fitted brilliantly, but I went, again, I went by the measurements from the pattern and whilst it fit my boobs, it was huge over my shoulders and my upper body. And also I went with the plunging one thinking, yeah, it'll be okay. And oh my gosh, it nearly went to my navel. It was ridiculous. I had to sew some of it up to make it even slightly decent for the vlogs to be kind of like seen in the mirror. But that one got donated. I wonder if anyone bought it. It was a, a white and red striped jersey from Girl Charlie. And I just had this whole nautical theme going on this month. This was channeling my inner Emily Horman and, you know, sewing in collections. And uh, yeah, nautical themed and underwater themed. That was what was going on this month. Oh, I wish that had worked. But these trousers, the 7131, we'll call 7131 trousers, I absolutely love. I do, this was fabric from the fabric room, so it wasn't expensive. It's a crepe. It wasn't the best thing to sew with because it hated being pressed, but it was so, so comfortable to wear. The only thing with these ones is that I hadn't taken into account the crotch depth. And I, as I say, I have a long torso, so these were slightly uncomfortable and have been donated. I am gonna make these trousers again in different fabrics because they're super comfortable. And I really like how they look. I really like the elasticated waist at the back because it wasn't just one big bit of elastic, it was three sort of small strands. So I liked how that looked. Plus they have pockets. 
Oh, this skirt. I, I still have this in my wardrobe, but I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep it. It's a pleated and gathered skirt, and there is a tutorial for that if you would like to have a look. I will have it listed in the description bar down below. And this fabric, Mum bought for me from thousands of bolts and only one nut. It's one of her favourite fabric shops in America. It's, it's come out exactly how I wanted it to. I know I, I've worn it out a couple of times. I know how I want to style it. I just don't know if it's very flattering. I think it's one of those things where it's stripes like that. You, you, you either love them or you hate them. This is a five panel circle skirt with some leftover scuba fabric that I'd previously made a dress from. I was really, really lucky to get this full circle skirt out of what I had left. It's slightly too big for me, so I need to take the waist in. This is a gathered, straight, rectangular gathered skirt out of some gorgeous fabric that I have since donated. I think the length on this one is wrong for me. This fabric I made my neighbours, over the road neighbours wife a dress and jacket out of it for her son's wedding and this is basically what I had left. I think it's just too short on me so this one has been donated but it is a very very pretty, pretty fabric. I like that a lot. Next up is the Vogue 8577 in skirt form and it's in a cafe facet shell bouquet fabric and I was going to make the entire dress but then I thought well I really like the skirt so I kind of added a waistband. I made this one up and fully intended to make t-shirts to go with it. I have the fabric for that but I still haven't gotten around to doing it. And then we went to the Festival of Quilts this year and I bought some more of this fabric because I'm actually going to make myself a, a tie fronted shirt to go with this. I liked the idea of it not being a full dress, it being separate. I really really like this. I need to wear it. It's, it's an awesome skirt. Ah, uh, now this one. This is the By Hand London Anna Bodice with a waistband and just a gathered skirt. This fabric was sent to me by the lovely Mary and she actually sent me three different lengths of these border prints. I think I was having one of those days where I wasn't feeling particularly brilliant about myself so I wanted to make something that I knew I loved and was easy and suited me. So I used this border print which is called Edible Garden and I love this dress so much. I have worn it a couple of times over the summer but again this was you can see there there's a bit of strain around the bodice. This is when I'm denying that I've put on the amount of weight that I've put on so <laughs> pretty dress though. Ah here we go the first 9199. This is made out of the cloud print scuba from Fabric Styles. I decided on a whim to make this one because I didn't have enough of this fabric to make the Jackie dress I think so it was like oh I'll give the 9199 a go and I'm really glad I did. The original pattern as you can see has got a high-low hem but I just evened that out and used the long sleeves. I really like this dress. I wear this dress very very often. Next up is the McCall 6696 in a octopus fabric that I bought from the Festival of Quilts the year 2016 I think I want to say. Maybe 17. I bought whatever they had left on the roll and I just just had enough to get this dress out of it. I've had to cut the yoke facing in a cotton lawn and the uh, the waistband facing. So yeah, the pockets and everything was cut out of. Anything that wasn't gonna be visible was not cut out of octopus fabric, but I really, really love this dress. And I've used tiny little Swarovski crystal buttons on it as well, which is really, really pretty. Again, it's probably a little bit too tight for me here because it was a pattern that I drafted or a pattern that I altered and copied when I was about a stone lighter so it fits me really well now but there it's probably a little bit too tight but I don't care because it's so pretty and I'm just like yay I'm wearing my dress. Uh, now I've been holding on to this rayon and this rayon is from Indian Royal Treasures which you guys will know that I talk about quite a lot. It is anchor and ship wheel print and when you look at it from afar like this you can see it's actually kind of like in sort of shell shapes which I hadn't realised until I saw the, the, the uh, lookbooks. I love this dress, I wear this dress very often. It has bobbled a little bit so I need to see if I can rectify that but it's very comfortable. I love the Sew Over Eve dress, this is probably one that's going to be more than five of. Right, so this was the half circle skirt tutorial that I did and again this one has gone to the charity shop because I just never reached for it. Keep looking at it, I really like that silhouette so I probably will make myself a few more of them. Clearly it was raining this day so we've got indoor twirls. These are the Till the Sun Goes Down beach pyjamas made out of the most amazing crepe. These ones I've actually given to my sister-in-law because I have lost weight since I made these and they are 
way way too big for me and I also added a little bit too much room in the torso this is probably one pattern that I didn't need to add an inch of length to the torso but my sister-in-law is five foot eleven so these fit her brilliantly and look very very cool on her I did a sew along for these which I really really enjoyed and I also wore these for the photo shoot that I did for the website which is coming soon I promise this is the 6563 pattern again. I haven't worn this t-shirt yet because as you can see there, it's, it's pulling a little bit over my bust and then the back it pulls a lot. This is the same pattern. It looks a lot better in the printed fabric because you can't see that it's pulling, but they both were a little bit too tight. They fit me much better now though. Oh my goodness. I was so, so excited to make this skirt. Now you guys have been asking me for the five panel circle skirt so long or tutorial for so, so long. But I don't know why I held off on it so long, but. I'm glad that I did. So when Spoonflower approached me and, and, and wanted to work with me and wanted to sponsor a video, not only did they give me the fabric, they sponsored this video. I was absolutely over the moon. I think you can tell in the video that I have a small crush on Spoonflower and I'm a bit of a super fan. <laughs> this is a beautiful, beautiful fabric that I've had my eye on for ages. The design is called Carrie S, I think. She makes amazing prints, absolutely amazing prints. And I know Maria literally bought this fabric and followed along with this tutorial and made herself one of these skirts which is amazing oh I love this skirt so much trouble is I'd kind of worked out that I had put on weight and I erred on the side of caution too much and now the skirt's way too big for me so I need to pick it apart and remake it and it's one of my projects that I will be doing over the next couple of months because I want to wear it this is the Butterick 6554 and I did a sew along for this dress as well I changed it up a little bit that I added the front ruffle to the bodice with the sleeves which wasn't an option that they recommended I really love this dress I wore it out dancing couple of times I've taken it on holiday with me it's rayon so it's super comfortable so very happy with that one this one is the 16 panel circle skirt you can use striped fabric to create this chevron effect oh my goodness it's a fabric hungry beast and I think one of my lovely subscribers sent me a message with a diagram of how you can cut this out in an economical way yeah I wish I'd known that at the time because I'd ordered seven yards of this fabric I could only find it in America I really wanted to use this one it's a timeless treasures poppy print I then ran out seven yards wasn't enough so I had to order some more and then I panicked because I couldn't find it and I finally find, found it but I was I was one panel or two panels short I think but I'm really 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 pleased that I persevered and got this skirt done because it is beautiful this is the Butterick 6562 I again erred too much on the side of caution with this one and made the torso too long and so this one has been donated but I will make it again and I have enough of this fabric to make it again in this fabric the only thing with this one is it's quite restrictive on the arms but there you go we have another sew over it Eve dress which is made with this beautiful palm leaf print fabric that I got from the textile center and I actually ordered the last I think they had six meters of it and I ordered all of it because I was thinking I know I'm going to make myself a second pair of beach pajamas out of it and then dad saw it and went shirt so dad has a shirt out of it now and I have a dress very happy with this dress I like it a lot I actually had to have this fa fabric smuggled in from America the lovely Michelle smuggled it over for me well I mean say say smuggled I bought it from fabric.com because it was seven dollars a yard or 7.99 a yard and in the UK the cheapest I could find it for was about 14 pounds per meter so it was quite significantly less expensive in America but it was licensed and so they wouldn't send it outside of America so I had to get fabric.com to ship it to Michelle who then shipped it over to me which was lovely of her it's a Anna bodice with a five panel circle skirt with a waistband and it's my palette cleanser it's my dress that I go to when I'm having a slump and don't know what to make and don't feel great about myself this is a dress that I know that I love and I know that I wear then we have another sew along oh I really like this one it was trouser month on Patreon Patreon. So Patreon peeps have been voting for the, for the sew alongs that I do every month and I, I am four behind and I'm going to do them. We will get there. This is Vogue 9319 as voted for by the Patreon peeps and I absolutely love it. Now I did lengthen this top by an inch and I need to lengthen this top by another inch because I'm wearing a black bra there and you can, you can see my black bra but it's awesome. Yeah, disco dancing was necessary. <laughs> 
Finally, I had made my Carolyn pyjamas. These were actually cut out December in 2017 and I finally got them finished in, I think this might be August. Not quite sure which month it's we're in at the moment, but the dog clearly approves. They're very comfortable. I wore them on Christmas day. Now this is the McCall's 6696 shirt dress, but I have stolen the back panel from the brewery I shirt because that has darts in it instead of the pleat. And I have added on a full circle skirt and I made this dress again because I was going on holiday and I wanted to put together a lot of mini tutorials. There's a whole different range of techniques that go into making this dress like French seams, French seam pocket, burrito in yolks, the whole the whole work. So there was a whole bunch of videos that came out of this which went up whilst I was away on holiday which meant that I didn't have to do any work whilst I was away which was fabulous but getting those done was a bit of a stress. Next we have the three quarter circle skirt tutorial that I did and getting my head around drafting a three quarter circle skirt pattern was interesting. We have another sew over Eve dress. This is some gorgeous coral rayon that the lovely Rachel sent me for part of the KB pattern swap. Her partner pulled out or couldn't take part. So Rachel and I did a mini swap and she so kindly sent me fabric. I, I, love, I love this dress so much. The, the sew over Eve dress is a fabulous pattern. Very, very happy with how it looks on me. Next up, we have the Vogue 9077. This was an interesting one. I nearly didn't finish it. It nearly went to the charity shop. The reason I didn't like this one is because of how the collar went together. And I, as I say, I nearly donated it. I nearly didn't finish it at all because it all it needed was hemming. But I'm really glad that I decided to take the original collar off and I substituted in the collar from the 6696, which looks so, so much better. And as you can see here, I am clearly very happy in this dress. I like the fit and flair of it. Really like this dress, will be doing more. And I'm going to do a sew along on it as well. This is Simplicity Pattern 4192. It's the wrap trousers and the little overtop that goes with it. That pattern's out of print, but they do have one that's very similar that has the, these trousers and the top in it. The top, actually, Anna, the lovely Anna has from You've Got Me In Stitches because it just, it wasn't something that I ever reached for. And uh, when I was saying that I was going to donate it, she asked if I could send it to her. So I did that. The trousers, I absolutely love these trousers. They, they kind of wrap over at the front and wrap over the back. I like them so much I made them in black as well. They're great for holidays and actually they're really really good in the summer months as well because they're nice and cool but you can adjust the waist on them which is great. Next up we have another sew over eve dress. This one is white and it was for a wedding that I was going to in Ibiza. I wasn't being an absolute witch and wearing white to a wedding. We were specifically asked by the bride and groom to wear white. I have since donated this dress. It's just not me. I mean, I'm glad that I made it. I'm glad that I, I had something to wear to her wedding that was that was white and that worked. It didn't feel right on me. I like prints, if you hadn't guessed that from all the ones that I've said I've donated. Oh, uh, now this is another Butterick 6554, and this fabric is from the lovely, lovely Candy, who has come up with the genius idea of how to survive the dentist. You go to the dentist, you behave like a lady, you don't bite them, and when you come out of there, you're allowed fabric. Now Candy really really kindly sent me a voucher for Hearts Fabrics in America which is her local fabric store. So this is a rayon. I knew, always knew that I, this one was going to be this dress. We've got another sew along and I cannot for the life of me remember the number of this pattern. And I know that Kay from Sunny Nunny sent me this pattern but I can't remember what it is so I will have put it up on screen somewhere. But I liked it so much I decided to make it to go with the three quarter circle skirt that I'd made. I wanted my suit. Uh, but I liked it so much that I decided to make a, another one. And this as I say was a sew along pattern. So the reason that I did two of these was because the first one was a bit, a bit little bit of a learning curve. The original pattern wasn't lined and had a very clever way of finishing the back and the facings and things but I wanted to line it because you know I'm difficult so the first one I did it and then I as I was going along I realized a few different ways that I could tweak things and actually improve the way that I was finishing the garment so I made another one and this is fabric that I got from Montreux Fabrics at the Festival of Quilts in August and it was always intended to be a little jacket of some type or another here we go we're, we're into the final stretch so this is my Kelly Anorak 
from Closet Case Patterns. You'll be seeing my November and December lookbook coming up very soon where I talk more in depth about this pattern but this is definitely my proudest make of 2018. I really really love it. Look at that lining as well. And then we have another amazing gift from the lovely Nancy. This is the Ulysses trench coat by Victory Patterns and they did a kit with everything that you see here, so the pattern, the fabric, the lining, the belt buckle, the buttons, the thread, the interfacing, the lot. I very nearly bought myself one, but I decided that I could source the fabrics and stuff locally, and then the lovely Nancy sent this entire kit to my PO box because I needed a little bit of Canada in my life, and it was amazing. I really, really like the kind of duster style of the trench coat. I'm really, really pleased really pleased with this coat it was really interesting to make as well the instructions were brilliant i loved the instructions for this the only thing is the fabric does crease the minute you look at it which is probably not ideal for a coat but other than that awesome thank you very much nancy right we're into the home straight i made this in i think beginning of december mate no i made this in november this is the vogue 8972 dress with longer sleeves i think i pinched these sleeves from the victory patterns dress that i'm currently wearing and uh, it's made out of a navy jersey with gold dots all over it in the shapes of roses it's really pretty but i'm not sure where i'm ever going to wear this because it's not dressy enough to go out in but it's too dressy to wear every day or maybe not maybe i'll just wear it when i feel glitzy ah now this is a coat that I made much earlier in the year but for some reason there was no twirl of it so I'm going to talk about it now. It's a Lakala bodice and then a McCall's skirt pattern so I smooshed the two together and I made it out of a very lightweight wool that I got from the textile centre. With hindsight I wish I had interlined it with cotton flannel to give it a bit more body because it's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect, it's also not remotely warm at all but it is very very pretty. It's a very specific thing to make this giant frock coat to go over in one dress but good lighting too. Then we've got the Victory Patterns Jackie dress that I'm wearing today. It is out of a stretch velvet from the Textile Centre and I think I am the happiest with this one out of all of my Jackie dresses. I fiddled with the back on this and I was very glad that I did because it looks awesome. And then the final one I have is another 9199 with some fabric that is from the textile centre and I had three metres of it which is why I made the 9199 because I also wanted to be very specific about the pattern placement with this one so that all the very dark pieces were running around my waist which I think worked out quite well. Really like it, it's something that I enjoy wearing, it's very comfortable but it looks stylish so yes, pleased with that one. So that is everything that I made in 2018. I think that actually might be a bit of a fib. I think there are a few bits and pieces that didn't make it to my bullet journal, which I'm not quite sure how that happened. And there are a few bits and pieces that I definitely don't have twirls of, but I think there are also bits and pieces that have kind of migrated out of my wardrobe. It's, it's really interesting looking back at everything that I've made because there is a definite trend to the things that I like and the things that have been donated. I need to bear that in mind when I'm making new garments coming up because I think I will have a better success rate if I think about the things that I do really, really like and enjoy wearing and the things that looking back, as nice as they are, they're just not me. I think 20, 2018 was interesting and it was really nice to branch out into different types of things. The sew-alongs were amazing. I was really, really happy with how they were coming along. As I say, there are four that I are outstanding and they will be coming up very, very shortly. As I say, I'm doing the necessary clutch wallets that I need to get made and sent out and then it's so along until they're all done and then we'll be back to normal service of a skirt tutorial a month a sew along a month some selfish sewing patreon rewards for the ten dollar tier and then one large patreon reward which i will be talking to you guys about in more detail in my patreon video which is coming very soon so i really hope you have enjoyed having a look back at everything I made in 2018. I've really enjoyed it. This is a much longer video than I intended it to be. The twelfth themselves are only 16 minutes long but I've got about 40 minutes of 45 minutes of waffle to splice in over the top so that's going to be interesting. If you've made it all the way to the end, well done. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!